Okay, then, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I'll be doing my emails and multitasking oh, while yeah. I'm, uh, Oh yeah, you doing moving yeah, around this morning. Yeah, you doing your early you doing your early thing, man. You doing your early bid. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, we all gotta we all yeah, gotta sure. we all gotta do that. We gotta we gotta learn how to coordinate and multitask when we become you know, you you're an owner operator, right? Yes, sir, I am. All you have to do is Yeah, what's going on, everybody? Good morning, good morning. What's up, what's up? Welcome back for another Lockout Men podcast. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. Thank you for joining me today. What's going on, y'all? How y'all feeling out there? You know what I'm saying? Just uh, just uh, getting up on this cool morning. It's going into a, it's going into a fall. Man, this this year, we we we. I, to be honest with you, I really can't wait until this year gets out. I'm serious. I'm, I'm pretty much done with this year. This this 2020, man. You you know they're gonna put this in the history books for real. All all the BS that went on uh this year, man. Well, I do have a podcast interview for you guys this morning. This young man comes to me by way of Facebook. But before we get into all of that, I want you to, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. You know what I'm saying? That bell and that all button just does it. You know, it just lets YouTube know that you're messing with me. I'm just saying. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by hitting me up with some coffee. The coffee app is in the description below as, lo as well as the uh, cash app. So you can hook your boy up with some coffee this morning. I'm sitting behind Denny. So as soon as I get finished, one of you guys could hook me up with some breakfast. I, I don't know. I don't know. It would be probably be nice if y'all do. But in any case, man, we about to go ahead and uh, jump right into it, man. Uh, this owner operator comes to me by way of Facebook and he decided to come on the show to talk about his experience and probably give you guys, uh, some tips on, uh, on, on what it is to be a owner operator in the trucking industry. Right now, I would like to welcome to the show, Mr. Darrell. <laughs> What's going on, bro, Ham? Hey, what's up with you, brother? How you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, man. I just got finished getting off the getting off the horn with my uh with my fleet manager, and you know he's he's just not not he he's he's doing the job to the best of his ability. Well, I I want to say, you know what I'm saying. I mean, it is what it is. With, 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 with fleet managers that's trying to find loads for for a guy of my stature. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh oh. Oh, I think I lost him. Hold on. Don't worry, we'll get him back. We we back. Yeah. Oh, there okay. We go. Okay. Hold hold on, right quick. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, lost you there for a second, bro. Yeah, I don't know what happened this week, but I, I heard you were saying you were talking, you were speaking uh, with your fleet manager this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was saying, I was saying that uh, that my fleet manager, you know, it's hard for him. It, it's it's hard for me to to just, uh, you know what I'm saying, because he's finding me loads that I'm not that I'm not fucking with, but. If I don't fuck with them, I, I won't get what I, I won't get the loads that I really want. So, Daryl, man, talk to me. What's what's the benefit? What's the benefit of becoming the owner operator of your own truck? All right. Uh, so let's just start off with the basics. The benefit of becoming the owner operator with your own commercial vehicle. Uh, so you have two forms of owner operator. 
you have a lease owner operator, which is the person that buys it, that is responsible for the vehicle, mm-hmm. and they go under somebody else's authority. Then you have the uh, standard owner operator, which is the person that's responsible for insurance, equipment, and uh, communication between customers and uh, do payroll and uh, financial transactions, negotiations. Okay, let me let me now, let me let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. Now, as far as the standard, now we we we're gonna use these two. We're gonna use these two terms. So, as far as the standard owner operator, as you say, he's he or she is in charge of just about everything. Now, yes, sir. Now, when a person that's that's kind of like in charge of everything, don't that make uh, don't that make being an owner operator uh, a little bit more conducive. Do you have to like find like 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 go out and find other people that you can trust to do certain things so that it takes some of the burden off of you? Yes, sir. And with that, when when you have to do that, you don't have to, depending on the size of your fleet and drivers. But when you do that, you will find out in this industry, 90% of the time that help, when you're seeking help, the first thing they're going to want to have information about is your income. They are going to want to be in control of your finance. Mm -hmm. So the more help you go and seek, the more people have tied to your bank account. Mm. So when less, uh, with the load, with freight, commodity, mm-hmm. the level, the, this thing is really based off of a word game because when you are interacting in this industry, 99.9% of the time you are communicating via, uh, via phone or email. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when these, these are just salespeople. They look at terminology. They look at how you say so or how you work. And you say, hey, man, uh, I need help looking for loads. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, you don't know anything. Because what type of loads? It, it starts to get very uh, specific. So when you are looking for help, you need to ask yourself, be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. If you are good at negotiating and you have great people skills, but you are not so great of understanding the regulations, then reach out to like free, free, this is free, FMCSA. They will give you a name to an auditor within your county or state. That auditor, which has to do it for public safety, that auditor could set up a meeting with you and ask you to please bring all the documentation. Now at that time, they will give you a step-by-step process. They will give you literature, easy to read and understand literature. They will give you a step process uh, booklet on how to file, when to file, how to label, how to organize. Okay. okay. So that is a free service to you. Now, when people, I mean, women or men, go out here and say, I want high paying free. I tell anybody that that is just like a person going into the gas station and say, I'm going to buy a lottery ticket and I'm going to win. Mm. Doesn't work that way. Okay. It comes out with people like you, like the way you are, by the way you talk, you are a people person. If I can make you feel better for spending time with me, usually I'm going to make more money. I'm going to get more money out of you. Okay. Because the high pain is free. Everything is high pain. I tell anybody, look at the the most obvious thing that you constantly lie to yourself about. And God said, what's that? I said, you think it's cheap free. I said, all right, look at the volume you could put in a 53 drive in. Mm-hmm. Look how much product, individual product that could go in a research. Look at the amount of weight of metal that's being transferred through flatbed. Oversized. I said, look at it. One guy like there, look at water. I said, all right, you go in the store. 
They, a lot of people think water is cheap, but actually it's not. Water is like one dollar and twenty five cents where you at a bottle of water. Right. And usually a semi moves about on on one trailer load, they move over a hundred thousand individual bottles. Now that's palletized. And I say, now if you have a hundred thousand bottles of water and each water costs a dollar, well, think how much money you need to negotiate. Then guys like, Oh yeah, I'm going to negotiate. Oh, 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 oh. Slow it down. You got to have your ducks in a row. You got to have that people skill. And then with the people skill, you got to have that terminology, not a owner operator terminology. Not saying, oh, yeah, this is a one pick, one drop, uh, easy on, easy off, no drop or sip. No, 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 no. That's for a different class of people. You have to have the terminology of understanding uh, load value, insurance requirements. Understand that you just can't run a $1 million policy. You have to have an aggregate policy. You have to have a policy. You have to tell the customer. This is how they do risk management. If I, if you allow me to be a preferred carrier, what are the requirements? That's step number one. And guys like Daryl, huh? I said, before you can negotiate, you have to see how much that customer is going to demand of you financially. They're going to have to switch the burden of cost. Like a uh, worker's cop, if you're using owner operators, company drivers, what if they get hurt on that customer's property? What if they get killed on that person's property? What if they damage this person's property? It's a lot of things that is not discussed. And then from there, you, you communicate with your insurance company. Okay. And your insurance company will give you an estimate, a policy agreement. Then, there's another trick a lot of people don't. This is what goes into rates. Then you have to do a COI. Now, you, some customers, about 80% in America, requires that the carrier brings them on their policy. Yes, heard me correctly. Mm-hmm. A manufacturer, let's say IE, just a hot made up manufacturer, but these are some of the standards that goes on right now. IE would say to DNL, hey, we will allow you to be a preferred customer, but we need, I need you to take your $1 million policy, add an additional $10 million, and then put me on there to help me if something or your truck should kill somebody, hurt somebody, some, just some unforeseen incident or accident. So my company don't have to pay out. And now you tell me what it would cost for you to absorb that risk. Now this 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 right here, bro, this this is this is some good information that you uh that you bringing out because this is the type of information that guys uh need to know when they're coming into, you know, making the making the transition from company driver to owner operator, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a, it's a, like I say, it's a group of people. It's a class. In America, we got the wealthy, the rich, the upper middle, middle, and then you have poor. Well, if you look at the structure of how we function in society, trucking is just like that. It, but the thing about trucking is so obvious that people choose to remove what is actually transaction that what's actually happening in front of them and go to a default, a safe, happy place. Hey, Daryl, man, I want to get mile paid. I want to make at least $2 a mile. Hey, man, my fuel mile, my fuel mile. I need to get my fuel calls down. Hey, Daryl, I need to stay out longer to make more. Hey, Daryl, uh, who's a good dispatch? Hey, Daryl, what company is good company? I tell anybody, you want to know what a good company is? Go on, FMCSA. Go and start checking carriers' accidents and incident rates. And I was like, yeah. I said, the company that files the less miles on the MCS 150 is probably the most wealthiest company. Okay. Less is. movement, more income. And then you got to look at safety. When, when owner operators 
the biggest Houdini Jedi mind trick was to tell us human beings, go in debt for me and I will take care of you. And the guy's like, huh? I'm like, all right, when you go and buy a semi, it's just not a semi year bond. You buy a commercial vehicle. Okay. And it's just not that commercial vehicle you're purchasing. It becomes just like your first state in the state of Texas. You are taxed as a property domain tax. And I was like, huh? Some guys that own operators, they don't understand what, why they didn't have tax liens and getting tax problems. I'm like, no, not only do you pay the state, but you have to pay the county. Your semi commercial vehicles in certain states, you have to pay an annual property tax because they deem that as a home. What? I said, I mean, because I, I pray, I, I pay property tax where, where I'm at, but you, you, you got to pay property tax as a, as, as, a yes, sim, as a semi owner. Yes, sir. On the trailer. And then you start to understand, okay, legality. All of this is considered an operational cost. Then you have to see this. Say to Texas, anybody has a Texas IRP account, that's your registration. The state declares the value of your commercial vehicle. The state tells you what it's worth. The state does not reveal the value of your vehicle. They only reveal the taxes that's owed for that vehicle. Okay. Your county then introduced the tax of property value, where they then declare their own value. You can't test it, but you still have to pay for it. So all of these operational costs that's going in, this is just small. Now, when you, when people, some people are like, man, you might get off, tr- uh, tr- uh, off track. I said, no, I won't own operators to experience it. You will notice in this industry, everybody has a value but us. What value are we declaring that's not mileage paid? The government doesn't do mileage. Your insurance company don't do mileage. Your credit card company don't do mileage. It's only us. So we actually allow companies in a uh, company and third-party sources to declare our value. Mm. And then when we want a customer, we look for customers, 80% of us ask them what do they pay versus us declaring our value. Mm. Some guys might say, it's a cheap freight. It's only cheap because a third-party has to clear your value. And okay. nowadays, majority of owner operators are interacting with apps. Technology is a beautiful thing. But also, technology could be the reason why a lot of carriers have bankruptcy, style bankruptcy. You know, because you give a system the algorithm the understanding, and they show you a number, and you say, yeah, that's right, You know, without any detail. You know, truckers... You know, uh, owner operators, you know, they was they was up in Washington this past uh, about a couple of months ago. And they was complaining about, um, you know, about the brokers and, you know, the pay and the cent per mile, you know, all like that. But with these apps coming in like Uber Freight, uh, uh, Truckers Path, uh, Truckers Tools and stuff like that. A lot of uh, a lot of us had to, you know, of course, adapt to the 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 technology that is that that is what it is. Yep. So, do you think that the apps? All right. Do you, do you think that the apps that's coming in uh, has something to do with with uh, with the variance of 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 the amount that these brokers is offering you guys for moving freight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most definitely. It, 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 it's, it's almost as this is the terminology I'll, I will use for the apps and gathering of data. I could go out there and fish one boat, one fishing rod, little ocean, plenty of fish, but I only catch one at a time. 
If I take that same boat out there, now I use a net. And that's the app. And I throw it in the ocean and gather a lot of fish that mm. us carriers and own operators using, giving away our data and pull it up. I get more with less time, less effort, mm. less travel. They don't have to pick up the phones anymore. That app removed one thing that was very critical in this industry. That was customer service. That was the understanding of having value for a carrier or owner operator picking up the phone. Now it just turned into algorithm numbers. And we constantly push this like, I need to get the load first. I tell God, there's always one load, one truck, one person. Take the time, communicate. The app will tell you, oh, and some of these app companies are notorious for this. Eight o'clock in the morning, the load pays $400, one pick, one drop. They would say general good, drive in, going 221 miles. First come, first serve for pickup and delivery, no longer. Okay. By five o'clock in the afternoon, that same freight, same broker, same location, now it jumps up to twenty one hundred dollars. Is that because now, like, Get on, he hold out on me? Is is that is that okay. because is that because the at at eight around eight o'clock uh nobody would take the freight because it was cheap at that time? Yay and nay. So let me break down where a lot of guys did, a lot of companies. Here go to Jedi Mind Trip. When ELD was introduced, a lot of companies pushed for safety. J.D. Hunt, a lot of these big corporations. And they said safety starts with removing trucks from traveling at night. Let's introduce a clock, a, a nationwide clock that moves the trucks at the same time. Hmm. Supply and demand, baby. Okay. More trucks available, bring down the rate. Less trucks available, Boy, let's give it. them a rate that they will call and we can find something. We can find a carrier. The ELD, baby. The ELD keeps everybody moving in unison. It's almost like a, like a ballet. Mm. So you Guys, like, man, I ain't even moving at 8 o'clock in the morning. Why? And that's that's one of the tools that brokering and brokering companies use. Okay. The ELD should not be the ELD is actually not our kryptonite. But the now, but the brokers, it's but the brokers um, yeah, but the brokers is making it that way though, right? Thank you. But correct. But we are constantly Constantly giving up ELD privilege, like Project 44. That's that new thing where companies, carriers, before I could do business with a brokerage company, I have to give them all my passwords to every ELD system I own. Now they can collect that data. They can be like, oh, uh, truck 008 is going to be empty at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now I know my customers in that area, they pay me. Twenty eight hundred dollars to go four hundred miles, but I, he's going to be up, and he's probably is not going to allow his drop. The, the clock probably going to start. Probably going to get unloaded. Carrier really don't want to fuss around, leave the driver stranded, and needs to make money, turn and burn. So I'm offering him uh, two dollars a mile. Where the carrier is now no longer negotiating because the carrier gave up all of his secret trading. Your ELD is your secret weapon. The only time you should reveal any information on an app or on any database is only with FMCSA. That's it. Okay, that's what's that's up. That's it. That's what's up. All right, so Daryl, tell me, man. You know, you know, as I as I opened up the segment, you know, we, you know, this year has been uh, just just a tumultuous year man i mean it's it's just been it's just been awful 
How has COVID season affected you as an owner operator? It it put us in a in a gamble situation. The responsibility has the mor- morals. Nowadays, I have to look out and say, do I send my guy to this facility where when he calls me, it's 20 other truckers outside and he, he posed the risk of catching me. Then I have to look beyond just the truck. family. Then I have to look beyond things about his family and ask myself, do I change my negotiation tactics? Do I increase my rate? Do I increase his pay? Because if he should catch it, he could actually get on me, to me. So it's been a stressful and a uncertain navigation. We have noticed that the people that really caring about carriers and own operators and drivers, they are being flexible with appointment time. They are actually staggering tractors. That's good, but it's come to a point where I don't want to send my guy to a truck stop. I, it's scary because do the freight outweigh his life? Do the freight outweigh with him coming in contact and taking it home to his family? So it's more on the morality side and morals. And stop looking at the mouth, stop looking at the pay, but actually looking at keeping healthy people or practicing safer methods. And uh, it just is stressful. It is, it has changed. It has cut out a lot of government work for my company uh, due to the fact that we have to uh, gather. So they just pulled the plug on that. And we have seen uh, insurance companies have been lenient. But the number one thing that I've been seeing lately, certain customers don't give a damn about the carrier and about this COVID. Some make you wait in the room with 10 other guys. Some say come to your truck, but they then say, you know what, during COVID, we're not going to pay you. Yeah, we took 24 hours to unload you. But hey, COVID. So it's a good and bad side. Yeah, they, so they more use businesses a, are, they, are experienced. They, they using that as a, they, they using that as a, as a crutch now, you know, uh, because of because of COVID, yeah. because yeah. of COVID season, we're we're not doing this and we're not doing that, or or because of COVID season is is why you're being loaded, uh, uh, five hours instead of two. You know it, that that's some bullshit in itself yeah. when you think about it. You know, but man, that's that that, that that is that that is that is crazy, man. It's like when you go to certain facilities, if they do to the safety and they try to protect their employees, basically screw you. Yeah. And now that's only, that's where company drivers, company drivers and the owner operators that have under somebody else's authority, Mm -hmm. this is what they don't see behind it. They don't see where carriers, some carriers actually fight, literally, verbally, send emails. Calling them, hey man, get my guy out of there. Number one, we still have to follow the ELD rule. Number two, gotta make sure you find someone safe to park. Number three, he's tired. He needs to rest. We we fight. I know how I do. I, I hey, hey, this ain't right. My rates went up. Well, what's your detention rate? Four hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, you crazy. Well, you crazy to think that that person behind that wheel is one is your damn dummy. He's not your property. He's not your slave. Can't do what you want to do. But then they'll get back, all right, we'll do this, do that. You can send out a formal, uh, uh, a legal uh, document to these customers. But the 
threaten to sue, you know, civil. But you find some customers that's being very care, uh, that's very thoughtful. And you got some that won't even pay the detention. Oh, due to our our uh, low staff, and we you hear every excuse in the book. You would hear every excuse in the on opera getting upset, man. I ain't make no money, I ain't do that. And I tell God, think about who's doing it. It's the people that already have money. Mm. So it is one of these things it's, it's the devil's advocate out here. It is truly and the craziest thing. I tell God, pay attention to the stock market. I'm watching the stock market Monday morning. I'm like, you know they are about to start stockpiles, overstock. They're about to ramp up. They are about to ramp up so fast and vastly that they're going to have carriers dropping trailers, carriers doing more power only, locking in fields. But one thing they are not talking about is increasing the rate. They have increased everything. Metal has increased. Nobody, not nobody, but I wish more owner operators, company drivers. You guys are about to be the true hero in the United States of America. All right. And COVID, yes, we need to start doing things like number one. Where the damn at? That's not it. That's me. Hey, I'm going to tell you why. Remember, at the when this is over, customers are going to remember the people that had morals. Doing this Where's time. The Start prepping your truck. There you go. Because they're going to call you back. Everything's going up. Set yourself up more signs on your truck. Please make those more visible. If you own a trailer, Please put your company name on the trailer. Start wearing shirts with your company name and your name on. Start wearing identifying markers about your company. Because once you do something good, believe me, somebody's always watching. You're going to be in it. And some of these brokers are understanding that. And they are going to try to lock in with the, with the carrier. Some just gonna try to lowball you to death. But some of them are gonna be like, okay, I need to increase my rate. I need to stop paying Johnny Boy over here two dollars a mile. I need to go ask you to the five dollars. So three dollars a mile is the new one dollar, if you like it or not. Two dollars a mile is the new forty cents a mile. Inflation mm-hmm. costs already determined that. So that's what we it's just certain things we gotta take up go ahead. So that's so with all that said, that would be that that would be the difference, the 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 pros and the cons from coming in as a company driver to coming in as a as an owner operator. All right. Yeah. Once you come in from a company driver, I need to clear if I clear it up, my mind is gone. All right. When you come in from a company, the pros Coming in from a company driver, number one, your experience. Number two, your driving history follows you. So your insurance uh, rates could be lower or your great driving record to allow the carrier to have a discount for bringing you on. So that's that's one of the biggest pros right there. Number two is your understanding on how to navigate um, and the experience. Experience, number one, because of the insurance. Now the cons is, understanding that you are the captain of your ship and you really truly are the one responsible for your income and your work ethic. So the con is you could be broke. You could be doing the same job and lose your house because a semi, the cost of a semi is the the cost of an average home in the United States. So you got more burden. That's a, as of right now, I've come up with, but yeah, you can lose. You can lose drastically. Okay. That's what's if up. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. 
How how long have you been how how long have you been an owner operator? I've been an owner operator since two thousand and ten. All right. So for you, uh, how how many trucks you got in in your fleet? Is it just you, or you got a couple of trucks? Uh oh, I think. I think I lost him again. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Hold, hold on, right? Yeah, here. Hold, yeah. Hold on, hold, hold on. Since I lost you, hold on. All right, go ahead. You, you got you, you, you just got the one truck. You got yeah. a couple of trucks. Uh, right now we are a two truck setup. Right now, uh, just two trucks for the longest. Uh, well, not for the longest. Uh, for the last two years, I went back down to a one truck operation. So last two years, how no truck operation. So for you guys, you know, being you know, for you guys that being independent owner operators, uh, of course, with with uh, with these, you know, with the majors, you know, they can bring in as many as you know, as many as 30, 40 drivers or potential drivers, and then they can weed them out. How 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 is it for you being an independent uh independent contractor with about a couple of trucks how is it for you to find these good drivers man because there's i i talked to a few people that that have found some drivers that really really did them bad how do you how do you sort of weed through to get that best driver for you uh first uh it's a, just a simple conversation uh, a, a, I call it an off the record conversation. That's where uh, me and him will either meet up. I usually try to do a restaurant setting, uh, offer lunch, I pay for the lunch, and let him just talk to me. And I would tell him everything bad that's out here in this industry. Hey, man, you're probably going to be somewhere you don't want to go. Hey, man, sometimes you might have to go to Maryland. Hey, I don't even care. I don't want to hear what your wife has to say. I go through those dialogue talks, talking points. First, we're going to talk about family. Second, we're going to talk about finance. Third, we're going to talk about responsibility. Uh, fourth, uh, we are going to talk about pay terms and, uh, and uh, advancement. Then we are going to talk about uh, skills. And I find when I used to uh have a lot on offering and company drivers. Usually a man that's not gonna be not gonna be a great candidate, he or she, they will spend two hours talking about them. And that's when I know he wants to be at home and he wants you to take her to his home and his home laziness. And and that's why I find out most guys that talk about family values are the ones that usually don't show up to work and the ones that will take out whatever anger they have a personal in a personal life they'll take it out on your equipment or on your customer mm. and then um you just get that talk it's just that it's the talk if a guy tells me hey i'm the best robert I, i'll never you never have to worry about me um uh, I, I, I'm gonna be there. I can, I can bag up. I can, I, I never had an accident. Uh, uh, everybody likes me. No, I don't want to hire you. You know too much. If you know all of this, then why, why are you, why are you, you just clown for me? You need why to hang, you for you need to hang up the one, keys. One truck for you need to hang up the keys if you, if yeah. you, uh, if you know, if you know a lot. If you know too much, it's time to hang up them keys, man. Time to hang up them <laughs> keys. That's what's hey, up. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's just it's time. just a talk. You really don't know. I had a guy uh, take a truck. He gets paid every week. Um, he was making fourteen hundred dollars. I was paying this back in twenty 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 seventeen. Paying fourteen fifty. We were running Dallas to Illinois. Illinois to Kansas City, back to Dallas, drive in. I never had to unload. 
The guy that stole the diesel and filled up both diesel tanks with water. Company guy. What? Man, why you did that? Why you do? Why that? you do that? Why why, you that's what my question was, him. Oh man, well you know I'm trying to I'm trying to move out my park and start telling me now it's about so you totaled out a tractor because you needed the money. You just got a one thousand four hundred fifty dollars paycheck. Mm. You, you stole only you sold the diesel. There's 120 gallons on each side, 240 gallons for a dollar a gallon. So you got an extra $240. But you just messed up a Cascadia that costs $9,000 for $240. And that's when I start to realize, like, what does these guys say that I need to stop firing them? And it's family. Family. Family, family. And uh-huh. then you got the drugs, then you got the guys that, uh, the alcohol, the alcohol too. Uh, I look at people's Facebook. I'm going to be honest, I don't look at Facebook. If I see you partying every Friday, I don't have nothing against that, but I don't think you will be a better fit for this position. Right. Because, <laughs> hey, I don't want somebody that, if you have a hangover, like you say, you have to be at work Monday, 8 a.m. And you drank all last Sunday. And then you get up Monday morning. And you go out there and kill a family, kill somebody, hurt somebody. And I knowingly, this is FMCSA law right here. This is FMCSA. I felt like he might have been a problem. But I'm fully responsible now. Wow. The government will come for me, shut me down, take their money. This is what guys don't know. FMCSA place liens, tax liens, actual fines. We as a public, we know the wording fine. The company's owners know this word, lien. They give you a certain amount of time, and if you don't pay it, they put a lien, and they're going to collect off your authority insurance. Or put it on your credit, take your home, take the tractors. They take everything, and they can because you sign the agreement when you sign up for the FMCSA to give you a USDOT number. Now this is and a lot. Now this this right here, game, like you didn't know this right here. Yes. What what you saying right now is is the pinnacle of what new what new owner operators or company drivers that that want to migrate into owner operation needs to know. Yeah. Uh, and and, and the, the thing is, it's not even a thing. This is why I would tell, I tell any brother, sister, if you want to know the truth, call FMCSA. You call them, you tell them, hey, I'm trying to be a potential carrier or a owner operator, get my own truck, sign up on authority. Can I please speak with an auditor? Now, they might take two weeks. But they're going to give you orders. Tell them you have safety concerns. They will sit down with you. It's not no scary movie. He's just human beings. They will sit down with you and show you the data. Then from there, you build your business off of that. All right. They will tell you the fine. They will show you fine. They are not going to give you no hypothetical numbers. Oh, no. Because... Here goes a fact about me that I'm open to share. My company went into, we were derated back in 2017. Derated. That means that the FMCSA sends an auditor to your home, whatever address you use. My own operators was faking the law book. We, we was cooking the books like it was a barbecue on 4th of July. Get caught. They first contacted me via email, contacted me by phone. I tried to delay it. Act like I'm, I'm, I'm acting stupid. Oh, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in a hospital. Oh, I'm like this. Well, they sent the guy with a badge, a gun, and 
federal employee FMCSA on his jacket with the Texas DPS, which is AKA State Trooper. They came to my house and do a damn up. Gave me a drug test. The whole nine yards. Then I'm thinking, oh man, this ain't bad. No, 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 no. Man. Then they went to my owner operator home as well. He he signed up under my story. Bad you you been uh falsifying your law? Yeah. All right, show us your truck. Huh? Yeah, take us to your truck. Mm. He called me up. Damn man, they man, they over here in my house in the I'm like, yeah, they got me too, bro. They just got old back. Man, they ran through an audit. I was in a two weeks audit. Two weeks audit, they imposed a fine of $10,580. Wow. That's the FMCSA. They federal agents. You can't curse in front of them. You can't do that. They are federal agents. And these are some of the things if you own an operator and you know him, you work for a shady company, you could get in trouble. <laughs> you could get in trouble too. All right. You cooking these ELD systems, you get the same. All right. You don't get the same ten thousand dollars fine. Now you probably gonna get that five thousand dollars fine. And I tell guys, that's not state, baby. That's federal. That's Washington D.C. fine. That's what's up, Daryl. They I, will collect. Daryl, I I want to go I want to go back uh, a little bit uh, where you was talking okay. about where you how you vet your drivers to uh, bring them on to drive for you. Uh, a comment was said. Um, they want to know is they want to know is you saying that you don't want anybody who works for I mean who works for you to have a family. No, sir. No, sir. I'm not saying I don't want anybody that doesn't have a family. What I'm saying is I need an individual that operates his family separate from business. Okay. Right. I understand that mercies to happen, things of that nature. But I don't want, I don't, this is what a lot of companies, well, me, I don't just speak for myself. This is what I've engaged with myself and carriers that we are very familiar with. Usually people don't show up to work because they're mad at the girlfriend. They think that their spouse is cheating. Spouse call into companies and find out, asking what did their spouse make? What was the paycheck? Did you direct deposit it? Then that's where the, the hey, why didn't you show up for the customer? Oh, my wife, you know, we, we ain't to it. These are some things that and I think most of them are lying, but guys want, some people want you to be sympathetic to their personal disruption in a relationship. So they want you to work around their relationship with their wife or their spouse. Okay, I got and you. That's why I see a lot of it. I got you. That's a, that's good clarification, right? Or use that baby. That's a good for clarification. Yeah, I didn't discriminate. That's that's what's up. Like, we just yeah, we just sir. needed we just we... needed we just needed clarification on that. Um, so before we get on up okay. out of here, man, I I, I want to thank you for coming on, man. I I really do this uh, information, these jewels that you give him, man, is 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 a lot to take in and a lot to uh, and a lot to swallow. And a lot of these new company drivers that's migrating into owner operators. You know, some of these behind the behind the scene uh, information that you give that you have given uh, a lot of people don't, uh, especially in the especially in the industry. The big people don't want you to know that, you know, they want you to come in. They want you to come in. blind. No, you know. Yes. But, uh, let me add this if I can. Do I get this is the, the I call it the, the pyramid scheme. Here goes three common items that own operators that lease to big companies or sometimes lease to a carrier. These are the lies that's perpetrated and makes the carrier a lot of shit ton of money. 
paying your twenty two ninety. Some carry charge you two uh two thousand dollars. It only costs five hundred and fifty, all the way across the board in the United States. Paying for your license plate. That is the biggest scheme there is. Some companies I see y'all some people get charged four thousand, five thousand. That's what your license plate costs. Declare value of your vehicle. You contact your DMV and find out how much the plate is and you could buy it yourself. Um Another thing, Bob Tell insurance. You don't need to be leased to a company to pay for that insurance. That insurance just covers you if you want to take the truck to the car wash, move around town, take it to a mechanic shop. Guess what? Average is, nation average is $50 to $100. And the last but not least, least, ISTA. ISTA, ISTA, ISTA. ISTA is paid for them. The, the national average of a care, or own operator, they don't say care. Own operate. That means you don't have to be leased. You can be leased. You got to open up your own account. It's easy. Just need a bank account and a mailing address and a VIN number to your commercial vehicle. Average people pay only five dollars every quarter. Not five. The more, the better your fuel mileage. Less consumption, less money owed. More consumption of fuel, more money owed. So they look at anywhere between. 5.8 miles per gallon to 7.5 miles per gallon or higher, you're probably only paying $3. And they do give you a refund. It's called an ISTA credit. So you don't have to pay nothing. They're paying you for operating your truck in a safe manner. Meaning you're not using a lot of fuel. When carriers charge these guys $40 a week, 70, I've seen some charge $75 a week. This is extra money. They will always keep you below. All right. And these are things you could do yourself. No company, this is federal law, no company could prohibit you from registering your vehicle and uh, doing your own tax, paying for your own thing, required by the United States government. That's what's FMCSA. Up. That's what's up, man. That's, That's a fact. Daryl, man, I, again, like I said, I do appreciate you coming on. And uh, and chopping it up with me, man. This is as this has been very very informational, and uh, like I said, it's a lot to take in. I got a uh, I got one last question for you, man. You you being the owner operator, uh, you say you say since 2010, right? What have what 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 are your pet peeves? Yeah. What 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 are some of the pet peeves that you have as an owner operator, man? Uh. Pet peeves on like my opera, uh, driving my truck, like my truck, truck, like trucking, or just like, on a, like what hurts you? What as being an owner operator, what what hurts you more? Uh, what hurts you out here? You know what I'm saying? As me as a company driver, what hurts me okay. is 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 guys in the fuel island. But you as an owner operator, I'm I'm sure there's more more things that hurts you than it than it is for me as a company driver. The thing that hurts me is the uh, driving in the center lane, uh, going below speed limit, uh, brake checking, unsafe driving. That's, that's, that hurts me. Tailgate, when trucks running on another truck uh, trailer. I don't like that. I definitely don't like the fuel allowance thing, doing that 30 minute break in the fuel allowance. And uh, trash. I've seen guys go to somewhere and just throw the trash out. So I'm like, ah, dude, put the trash in. And safety, yeah, yeah. And then the condition of truck. Seeing people um, rig up something just to get the load. I'm like, dude, this is all safe. It, it just, any majority of things that really bothers me, if it could take somebody life, man, that, that, that pissed me off. That's... Quickly, if you can hurt yourself or somebody else with some unsafe driving or practices, now I could get held up. I could wait until I. But if I see you on the highway and you doing, you know you sleeping, you swerving lane to lane, I'm gonna be the guy to call the phone. I'm gonna be off the he says off the road. But that's just me. That's All just right. Me. All right. Pride. Hold hold on for a second. All right. Yeah, that's. 
Yeah, that's you. You mentioned a lot of things that bothers me the most as well. You know, drivers throwing trash out their windows at the truck stops, being hemmed up in the uh, fuel island while they taking their showers and all like that. Now, as far as, you know, truckers, you know, tailgating. Yeah, all of that. All of that irks me, man. Everybody, Daryl. Oh, man. Daryl, man, what what's some of the what's some of the tips that you can offer uh, offer these uh, truck these new truckers that's thinking about getting into owner operations? What 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 type of tips or advice do you have for them? Uh, tip one is read everything. Read any documentation you sign. Big print, give it. Small print takes away. Number two, do not do a verbal agreement with any company. Do a written agreement. Number three, add, use basic math. Stop believing in this complicated math structure of a company telling you percentage and this and that. Basic math. Make sure they show you the number. Number four, always remember your family is first and safety is number one. And you will make it. All right. You will make it. All but right. Just read. Just read. Yeah. All right. I got uh I got read another your agreement with company. I got another comment that came in before I end the segment. Um a comment asked, uh, do you mentor by chance? Do you do any mentoring? Uh, I, yes, I, yes, I do. Right. It just, everybody, it depends on that person level and understanding of the uh, industry. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Daryl, man, again, thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, all this, all, all these jewels right here. That's, 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 that's a lot of, a lot of guys that's transitioning into owner operations. You know, they do need it. I do appreciate it. Very good tips, man. Very great conversation. Um, we're going to have to do it again, man. We are definitely going to have to do it again. So, uh, yep, you, you have a blessed, you have a super blessed day, man. And, um, and don't be no stranger, man. If 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 anything that changes or anything like that, you want to come back on, by all means, you know, holler at me and I, I'll bring you right back on, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank uh -huh. you. All right. All right. Well, again, everybody, Daryl. And uh you have a you you have a you have a good day, sir. You too, sir. You be safe. All right, man. Awesome conversation. Awesome, awesome conversation. Uh, if you guys definitely want to, uh, if you guys thinking about uh, going into owner operations and you want Daryl to give you some more tips and all like that, reach out to me. Leave your com, you know, leave it in the comments below or hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockoutmen at uh, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail dot com. Um, and I will forward your information to him and uh and you guys can uh you guys can link up that way. Um and this is and, and this is what's this is what it's all about with uh the Lockout Men podcast. You know what I'm saying? I bring interesting people on that gives, you know, that that gives the jewels. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you you can find jewels on Facebook, YouTube, and all these other groups, but I try to find people that's inspirational, you know, whether, you know, they just now starting or they've been in the game for a long, you know, long period of time. And I'm I'm just happy that I am able to share that with you guys. And I am happy to give my platform to them to share with you guys. So if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. And 
so that YouTube know that you fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I like to tell you guys that we have hit a milestone where we, we still climbing. Our goal is to 10,000 subscribers. I will turn the subscriber count back on as soon as we hit that. So definitely share this out to your friends and their friends and your friends and all friends so that they can all congregate with me over here at the Lockout Men podcast show. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping that I'm bringing the information that you guys need, that you guys want, that you have a good time and and hopefully a little bit of entertainment, a little a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But uh it is it is what it is. Well, you know, with with different YouTubers that's doing different type of styles on uh, on our platforms, you know what I'm saying? So it's always good to to have your style, but if you want to copy somebody else's style, maybe that's a form of maybe that's a form of flattery or something like that. But um, but yeah, we we all in the same game. We all in the same game. If you guys want to hook a brother up with some coffee or some breakfast this morning, man, please do that to your please do that for your guy. You know what I'm saying? You can hit me up in the and you can hit me up. You can get me some coffee. Leave it in the link. Uh, the coffee link is in the link description below as well as the cash app. Thank you to uh, D Nitty for hooking up uh, for hooking me up with some coffee today. And thank you to we about to see in a minute. Thank you to my guy Jesus. Thank you to my guy Jesus for that cash app, man. I appreciate you. Thank to er, thanks to everybody that's in the lockout. I mean, that's in the LOM community that joined me this morning. And thanks to you guys for watching and listening. Until next time. I am Lockout Man for the Lockout Man podcast. I will come back at you guys with another video. Peace. Searching, 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 and searching, searching, searching. searching.